this is courtesy of variety let's get this up on here on the screen it says yes boy if i can share 60 million plus deal with alex cooper for call your daddy podcast yanking away from barstool when i saw this news my jaw hit the floor not because of the amount but because the podcast in question because there was a period of time when obviously call your daddy went through their drama a couple of years ago or a year ago i'm not sure what it was when one when obviously it was two girls sophia and this girl called alex and they had a bit of a passa passa, a little bit of a button of heads, which eventually led to them both splitting and then led to Alice Cooper staying at Barstool, taking the deal that Dave Portnoy gave her, um, kind of seeing how her contract, for lack of a better term, to kind of simplify it, um, Dave Portnoy. Because kind of, I think what was the issue at hand, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was, no, it was money, yeah, it was money. They both didn't think, which is always an issue, isn't it? This is what made it funny when Joe Biden kept telling everybody, all the fans, it's not a money thing, it's not a money thing. Yes, it is, it's always money. It's always money, it's always money. So they both felt like they were being underpaid because I guess for whatever reason, regardless of your your kind of success, I guess, under the boss or umbrella, you're all kind of paid a flat rate, I guess, salary-wise. I'm not getting, I'm, I'm not under details. But then over time, obviously, Dave Portnoy saw the value they brought to the company, the amount of merch they were moving, all this stuff. Downloads are getting plays and allegedly the downloads are comparable to what Joe Rogan gets, right? So for two girls just yapping about their sex lives to get as many downloads as joe rogan who sits down with you know some of the smartest people in the world for three plus hour conversations and this is like a heavily edited you know hour tops um podcast it definitely goes to show that they had definitely something right they had a lightning in a bowl so it's definitely a thing and then obviously they felt like they were getting underpaid they went to the negotiation table somehow within that negotiation the two girls fell out um you know i guess they had to they kind of maybe had a silent agreement that they were both going to walk away but then sophia walked alex didn't she stayed which might have seemed like a snake move i don't know but then she ended up being the smart one in the decision because i think dave portland then realized hey i'm not willing to fight you on this all the time i see you guys are the ones right you got the power you got the juice so i can't hold you back so basically see out your contract and i guess he's kind of one of the best founders of all times and business partners because he was willing to basically tell them hey or tell her specifically if you see out your contract i'll give you back your ip i'll basically give you the ability to kind of take call her daddy and kind of shop it around and get a better deal for yourself just see out the contract and do right by me i'll do right by you she did right by him it feels like and then now she's got this 60 million dollar plus deal with spotify what made me my jaw hit the floor was the fact that i listened to a bit of it prior um when they were both on the show right sophia and alex and again it's not for me but then when she left and she was doing it on her own, the show dropped in quality drastically. Really, really bad. In terms of even just uploading ep new episodes, you know, it felt like everything was a chore for her. She didn't actually feel like she went to do the work, which is, I guess, a, a thing that I've kind of get, learned to um, find amusing, especially, you know, being a kind of an A-type and being all work, work, work and waking up early and doing all these mad things to listen to podcasters especially people like red scare who kind of enjoy and revel in the idea of like not really wanting to work it's kind of funny now but back in the, back at that time i was like eh, that doesn't make sense why wouldn't you want to just press record and do your podcast if you're getting paid millions to do it's the easiest job in the world but you know who, who cares but 60 million dollar plus deal is just wild man congratulations to her i guess and if you're Sophia, you must be screaming into your pillow right now. But it says here, um, Alice Cooper and a sex positive podcast called Daddy are leaving Barho Sports, sorry, Barho Sports, Barstool Sports, coming to Spotify exclusively streaming next month under a multi year deal. Supposedly it's a three year deal for 60 million. Ugh. And she's allegedly getting 20 million up front. She smashed it. Um, all existing and new episodes of Call of Daddy will remain free and starting from July 21st will be available on only on Spotify. In addition to bringing the podcast to Spotify exclusively, the deal also covers all future episodes and additional exclusive projects in development with cooper which is interesting because i think that's one thing i, I remember dave portner saying he didn't want to offer them yeah i think he said it recently in a recent interview he didn't want to give them because he said he said Barstool had the financial abilities to match spotify's deal which i had a hard time believing but who knows maybe they did have the money to do so but it just didn't it would just wouldn't probably make long-term business sense so anyway they didn't do it but he said one reason why he didn't do it was because he didn't want to be on top of her and kind of you know pushing for stuff to come out at a certain time and micromanaging in that respect because he's basically saying look if i'm putting 60 million into you i'm going to be a lot more hands-on and he didn't want to be hands-on he went to kind of let them be free or let her be free alice cooper which is why because he understood part of the magic was the fact that she's you know 
lazy he doesn't like doing the work but then when it finally does strike and when it finally does come uh, when the episodes do finally hit and you, you know there's nothing kind of out there like it in that regard maybe that's what he kind of felt so that makes sense the three-year agreement says that between Cooper and Spotify is worth more than 60 million two sources familiar with the project said um, Variety the this makes Spotify's biggest exclusive deal for a woman that podcast a date the Wall Street Journal which first report talks had pegged the deal at around 20 million the deal does not involve Barcel Sports, which is the home of Core Daddy since 2018. Going forward, Spotify will produce Core Her Daddy with Cooper. So definitely might see a direction, change the direction of content, what she's doing. But then the future project things are interesting. I want to see what she ends up doing there. If she ends up kind of taking on more of a senior role inside the company or whatnot. If it, or maybe it just might end up killing the podcast. You don't know. Which is probably why she they probably try to get the twenty million dollars up front, just so they can get something from this. Because if it ends up falling flat in their face, you don't want to walk away with like nothing, can it? Because it's all tied up in guarantees and whatnot. So it says here, it continues. I think it's a quote from her. It says, I'm incredibly thankful for everyone who has supported, helped, and been part of Core Daddy Cooper said in a statement from its start three years ago. The show has always been about challenging the status quo and manifesting conversations that previously only happened behind closed doors. But then that's a problem though, isn't it? To call that. The whole thing about it is that if you're in a relationship and if you're not young anymore, is that kind of show even interesting? I guess it maybe is in terms of a voyeuristic point of view. You want to kind of find out what people are getting up to regardless of what their age. But part of the charm I thought about it was the fact that there were two, let's say for lack of a better term, bimbos trying to find their way in the big city and then sleeping with loads of men along the way and kind of finding themselves, right? In that regard. Um but then when you're like in a relationship and you're, or you're married and you've got kids and stuff, you can't be talking about sucking some guy's dick in the toilet anymore, can you? Because it doesn't happen. But who knows? Um, Court Daddy has consistently ranked in the top 15 podcasts across all platforms this year and was number five most listened to podcasts on Spotify in 2020. The number one podcast on Spotify last year was Joe Rogan, followed by TED Talks Daily, The New York Times, The Daily and Spotify exclusives. The Michelle LeBron podcasts are all paid for. And they're, Jesus, it's so game the system, isn't it? Which probably explains why she got so much money because if you're able to break those kind of numbers and keep in those kind of rankings without having all the kind of corporate overloaded over over all overlords sponsoring you and pumping you up and kind of inflating the numbers, that means you've actually got genuine fans. That means if she comes to put on a call her daddy live event, she'd sell tickets. Do you know what I mean? Like there'll be in a there'll be probably I won't say arenas, maybe maybe theatres full of people willing to like sit down and watch her talk on stage for sure i'm not I, there's no way i'm i'm not believing that it says here core daddy also is the second most popular female-led podcast globally after the crime junkie hosted by ashley flowers and brit Proto, according to the data released in march spotify's deal locking up core daddy bring another hugely popular podcast on the stable shows um joining the joe rogan experience the Dak shepherd arm checks but coming to spotify exclusive on july 1st um, so if I also signed exclusive deals with partners, including the Obamas, the Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, who gives a shit. And it has also acquired companies like Gimlet, Anchor, Pyrocast, Megaphone, as well as Ben Simmons, The Ringer. This also makes you think why this also kind of, if anything, paints Joe Budden and his kind of whole fuck up with Spotify in an even worse light. If the fact that they were able to do deals with all these different people for varying amounts of money and Joe Budden wasn't able to secure a deal for himself and his friends and make them millionaires. He had to kind of, you know, take a stand or for lack of a better term, hide the books from his friends in the process and then not walk away with anything. And it would be so ironic because I think there was an image circulating on the Joe Budden podcast subreddit of allegedly Rory and Mo, um having a meeting at the Barstool Sports office. It would be so, there'd be so much kind of karmic sort of justice if like, you know, Rory and Moore's podcast ended up under the Barstool Sports umbrella and then somehow along the process, they end up getting bought out or they end up kind of getting, you know, a deal with Spotify further down the line because they were getting crazy numbers after they did their deal with Barstool. Like, or they just end up getting a crazy contract from Barstool to keep them there. Like, that would be, that would be typical, isn't it, of the universe of saying, hey, this is our, this is our way of telling you, Joe, that you did, you fucked up. Um, you would imagine that would be pretty crazy, but you never know. Joe probably might end up kind of rescuing the JBP and turning that into a multi-million dollar thing. All things are possible.
It says here, originally called a daddy, was hosted by Cooper and Sophia Franklin with the duo bantering in especially risque topics. Last year, Franklin and the P Cooper had a public spat with Barcelona Sports President Dave Portnoy over the terms of their contract. Portnoy, among other things, claimed to offer them a base salary of 500,000 plus bonuses and other incentives. Franklin did not sign a deal and said that she felt betrayed by Cooper after quitting the show. Franklin launched her own podcast, Sophia the F. According to Spotify, as the show has evolved, Cooper's priorities has been to uncover the importance of therapy, self-care, and personal growth from sharing her own mental health journey with her listeners, who she refers to as a daddy gang. The podcast has also spawned a successful line of merchandise. Cooper's... So, the other girl, Sophia, I guess, you obviously you're shouting into a pillow about this news, but in general, if you're not, if you didn't feel cool about the deal and you generally feel like you were being underpaid and you know, maybe it is the biggest mistake in podcast history. Who knows? But if she didn't feel right and the vibe wasn't good, it, like you should just leave. I, I don't know. I've worked in too many environments, especially offices where people kind of complain daily about their jobs, but they get paid pretty well. And I just don't see that as a bargain I'd willing to take spending, you know, half of my day every time you go out for drinks they're always moaning about the manager or their or their workload and it's like surely there's not surely that's kind of taken away from the uh, your kind of joy and satisfaction of earning that salary you earn if every time you think about your workplace you just get angry that kind of feeling where you're on the train to go to work and you're really fed up before you even stepped your foot in there it just isn't worth it so maybe she walked away from a big check she walked away from you know a possibility of making millions and millions but she might be happier now personally um she obviously has her own thing going on and people kind of enjoy so if you were there if i listened to a couple episodes the other day and it was fairly enjoyable again not obviously made specifically for me in mind but definitely you could see she knows what she's doing so if that's the case and they both were able to kind of obviously dave portner kept saying that you know alex cooper was the one the genius behind the brand but they've obviously both got something in terms of media and in terms of presenting themselves on social media and on, on socials and in that sense you know i could still see a scenario where she could come back and do something on her own regard that could catch the public consciousness and become a cultural viral hit in that regard and i don't necessarily think it's a bad thing all, all along i don't think it's a bad thing at all it continues cooper's guests on core daddy have included mia khalifa Malay cyrus ricky thompson the topics on the show have included reclaiming your power after experiencing trauma sexual fluidity self-love debunking mental health stigmas this is probably everything that you wouldn't want to hear at a house party in it you probably want to make you leave the or it probably it's the kind of topics that would kind of get you chucked out of certain groups at a house party if you had the wrong opinions in it oh as a dude this is not topics that you want to hear about you continue to we'll be excited to welcome quote that's a better dead level and few testament bus for listeners generated after each episode is emblematic of the magic of the podcast and it's connects with a millennial and gen z generations while empowering her audience to openly express themselves creepers and ripped by the uta which brokered a deal with spotify alongside law firm jansen jacobs handsome jacob sorry but jesus man congrats to her man 60 million for for in my opinion a podcast that kind of feels like it was on the on its last legs it wasn't really you know it was kind of trudging along and she's been able to kind of revive it get a deal out of it and again it goes to show numbers really do count stats do matter in that respect whoever's getting the most downloads and listens and views would eventually be able to kind of write their own ticket write their own check and she's basically gone ahead and done that and you can't hit on that man so congrats to her let's see wagwan in it let's see wagwan <laughs> 